Last time on Delightful Travelers, we made our way around the amazing city of Catania. It was easily one of our favorite places we've visited so far. In this video, we're headed to the beach. We'll be checking out Giardini Naxos and all it has to offer. I'm Trevor and this is Anna. In this series, we're exploring the south of Italy. Join us in our adventures by hitting subscribe and clicking that like button. An extra thank you to our channel members and patrons for making these videos possible. Now, let's go to the beach. I'm on my way now. Well, welcome to another video here in Sicily, you guys. This time, we made our way back to the beach. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've had a proper beach day, and if you've been following along, you kind of know why, but <laughs> now we finally made it to a very good beach town. This is Giardini Nexus. So if you guys are wondering where this town is located, it's very, very close to Catania. It's on the east side of Sicily. It's actually very, very close also to Mount Etna. So I think a lot of people come to this region for that purpose. It's also close to a cute town called Toramina. I might not be saying that correctly. It's right over there. A lot of people visit this region also for that town. So we will be visiting that town in an upcoming video, but I want to show you what we're looking at right now because we can actually see it. Take a look at this town on top of these cliffs and off in the other distance you might be able to see Mount Etna just kind of looming in the background. It's absolutely crazy the visuals around here. Plus we even have a beautiful beach that's in town that we're going to very shortly. We are at the marina, clearly taking boat tours is a very, very big thing here. And there are loads and loads and loads of boats. I wonder if you can like rent one and take it out yourself. Not that I know how to motor a boat, but <laughs> look at the color of the water. It's just so clear. I don't know if you guys can tell that through the camera lens. So coming into this town, it was actually hard to find information on what it's like. We looked at blog posts, we tried to find other videos, and there's just not a lot. There's really not a lot. I don't think a lot of people will come here, or if they do, they don't really document it. <laughs> Uh, I think it's because Toromina is like literally yeah. right next door. It's super famous. It's I think one of the most well-known towns all in, in all of Sicily just because it's so pretty. Yeah, so I think what we're saying is people seem to kind of skip this town, but our suggestion would be not to because we're really liking it so far. And the fact that Toromina is so close is a great combo. It is. We're going to do both. I know for some people, if you have a low budget, you might want to stay in Naxos. It's just a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Get the full beach here and then you can do a day trip up to Toromina. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how busy the beach is today for a little bit of context we arrived in Sicily in almost the end of August and everywhere has been so packed we tried to go to the beach in Palermo you literally like couldn't move an inch and we couldn't even stay uh, now it's early September we got here on a Thursday it's now Saturday it was super quiet when we got here yesterday the beach wasn't too busy at all so I'm very curious to see what it's like down on the beach because it's a little bit busier in town. As you can probably tell, this town is absolutely adorable. There's all these boutique shops. It's the epitome of a beach town, but there is one thing we have noticed. All the beaches here seem to be owned by beach clubs and restaurants. There's almost no access to the beach. I mean, I'm talking grids in grids of beach clubs and sometimes it's really tricky to find that kind of public path to get to the beach and sometimes there's actually no public part of the beach. To us as Canadians we find that really strange. We're just not used to it but it's not going to stop us from going to the beach today. Before we make our way down to the beach Anna is on the hunt for something. <laughs> yeah I think the one thing I did not pack this time was a beach hat. We haven't really spent much time at the beach so I haven't needed one but I think today I might need it. What do we think of this one? Is it the winner? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's sort of works, but I don't know if it's quite you. Success. I actually found a hat. Do you guys like it? Leave me a comment below and let me know. But funny enough, and I could be totally wrong here, going back in the memory banks from a long time ago, I remember buying it. I've had a hat like this before, and I feel like maybe I bought it in Naxos, Greece. How funny would that be? <laughs> yeah, the price was only, what, 10 it euro? 10 euro. Not too bad. I, I know we're in a touristy little shop here, but it's super cute. It's yeah. cool and right by the beach. So the plan right now is to try out one of these beach clubs. This is something we don't do very often. Normally, we go to like a public part of the beach, but heck, we are in this little town. It's definitely what you do here, so might as well try it for once. When in Rome. So we made it inside and let me tell you, this place is really 
big and it's really, really not that busy. I expected on a Saturday in early September to be way, way busier than this. We actually managed to get uh, loungers right in the very front row next to the water and we came at like 12.30 or 12 on a Saturday. So I think this place is slightly more expensive than some of the other places on the beach. It was 25 euros for two chairs and one umbrella. Now yesterday we stopped by a few different places and asked. This place was 30 euros yesterday. So I'm not sure why. They just said it's low season. Now all of a sudden, like one day later, low season. And then a few of the other places up the beach were about 20 euros for two chairs and one umbrella. So it's not so bad. I bet you it's a lot more in July and uh, the first of August. Maybe you guys will totally disagree with me, but I'm more than fine to pay five extra euro to come to a place that's much, much quieter and not too busy. It's pretty chill here. I noticed the ones that are next door to us, it looks like a lot more of the umbrellas are up, which I'm assuming means it's pretty packed there. Not packed, but much busier there. But let's compare it to some prices of some other places that we've been. Like 25 euro certainly isn't cheap, but it's not crazy expensive. The last kind of beach destination we were at was Turks and Caicos, and the cheapest we could find there was 40, 40 USD. Uh, and before that we were, as a lot of you guys will know, in the Dominican Republic for months and months in a town called Cabarete. And I think it was less than $10 for uh, two chairs and an umbrella there. <laughs> so speaking of the Dominican Republic, one similarity here is there are vendors on the beach. So there's a lot of folks stopping by trying to sell you different kinds of things. Now, in the Dominican Republic when we were there, you could just say no gracias and they would just move on and tell you to have a great day. Here, they kind of stick around a little more. They really, really try to get you to buy something and sometimes they almost don't take no for an answer. Didn't expect to find this here in Italy, but maybe that's just how it is. You guys, the water here is so incredible. How we missed the style of the Mediterranean beaches. I mean, it's been a while, but... It's been a while, and I forgot how salty the Mediterranean is. You just naturally float, like, on top of the water. It's crazy. I don't know if you can also tell, like, the water here is so buoyant. So it must be, like, extra salty, like, much more salty than we're used to anyway. But let's talk a little bit more about, like, why these beaches are like this. And what I mean by that is, like, why is there not more public space on the beaches here in Italy, you guys? And I mean, I ask that, honestly, I just want to know the answer. Most of the beaches we go to are kind of set up like this, where there's all these beach clubs and there's very crammed together and there's almost no room to, for the beach. So again, just something that shocks us. This would never happen in Canada. Before you say there's no beaches in Canada, there is, and this would just never happen. So again, so far we've just been going kind of around some of the coastline here in Sicily and we keep finding the same thing. It's an interesting observation. The beaches here are so beautiful. I just don't understand why there's not more public space. Maybe let us know down in the comments. The water is slightly chillier than I would have expected for September. I honestly thought being this late in the season that it would kind of be like almost hot but it's not it's a little shocking when you walk when you walk in but once you start floating around a little bit get get wet it's totally nice it's very refreshing let's put it that way and I love that it's sandy too I, a lot of you guys that have been to the Mediterranean probably know that a lot of beaches here in the Mediterranean are pebble but this is totally a sandy beach we're back in our place now and we just took a quick dip in the pool to get the salt water off us. The place we're staying is, it's just okay. I wouldn't say it's over the top. We'll give you guys a quick little tour because I know you guys like to see where we stay when we're traveling. So here we go. This is kind of like the main, I guess, living room area. There's a bed back there instead of a couch. This could be a dining room table. We just have it dubbed as a desk. You got like a little kitchen area over here and then you have a fridge and a microwave. Uh, there is also like a closet and of course you can see all our luggage hanging, hanging around. There's a TV as well. Here's the uh, master bedroom. Now one thing about this room is there's no air conditioner in here. It's way out there. So it does get a little hot at night given it's about 30 degrees every single day. But we've been surviving of course. If we walk this way, uh, we'll find the bathroom. Hannah's in here. Get my makeup done after uh, the beach today. But this is the bathroom. It's actually a super roomy bathroom. Of course you have your toilet of the day as we do in all our Italian bathrooms. The shower is pretty good, but it's also pretty small. We're gonna take you outside so you can see our, our view. It's not much of a view, but take a look at these. We're not used to this kind of thing, but they have these big kind of, uh, <laughs> like there's a rope and a big shutter. And what it's really great for, I'm sure it's part security, 
but it's also part, um, it keeps it cool in here basically because when the sun is pretty strong, so in the mornings it's hot here. So having these down really helps. We do actually have a great big patio out here. It does have a big drying rack, which is really great, at, especially when you, you know, spend the day at the beach or the pool and you need to dry off your clothes. <laughs> And over this way, you're not going to see it, but way off in the distance, you, there is an actual ocean view above all the rooftops. <laughs> yeah, this isn't actually the room that we originally booked. We had booked like a studio apartment, how, and it actually had a really nice view of Etna. However, they put us next to like these like frat boys that had two, mm -hmm. two bedrooms con almost connected to each other. So they were like, had the doors open, going back and forth all hours of the day. And, and they nice. basically came back <laughs> like... 2 a.m. and we're very very loud so they ended up moving our room thankfully so if you're wondering the cost it was about a hundred euro per night but that was for the studio of course not for this not that they're charging us extra to stay in the bigger room but thankfully they didn't move us. well we've come over to a restaurant called La Trinacchia and we're on the hunt for some Sicilian style pasta check out this we got some white wine this was only five euro now I have a glass and it has a glass that way this was filled to the top five euro. What is that, like six or seven Canadian dollars for all this wine? I can't believe we have been in Sicily this long and have not, not tried pasta alla norma yet, but tonight is the night. So if you're wondering what it is, it is a pasta dish that is from this region. I don't think it matters what type of pasta you make it with, but it is made with eggplant and a very salty ricotta cheese. That does sound good. I think there must be some tomato sauce on there as well, just based on the looks of it. Ooh, that looks hot. Hopefully I don't burn myself on it, but I think I, I got some pasta. I think I got some eggplant and some of that ricotta. Okay, yeah, that is way better than I would have expected. I don't know if I've ever really had a pasta other than maybe like a basic primavera that has eggplant in it but it's really really simple and delicious i thought the eggplant might be a little bit overpowering or a little too smoky but it's just like little chunks of eggplant if you don't even like eggplant i don't know if you'd even notice it notice it so much in this dish but it's uh, a little bit tomatoey and i love the ricotta on there just a little bit of saltiness it's almost like a, a little bit of parmesan but but saltier mm. Yeah, this is this is a keeper and I can't believe I haven't tried it before this night. All right, check out what I got here. Look at these little pieces of pasta. So in this guide, there is some pesto. There is some pistachio. So normally where we're from in Canada, you don't norm, you don't often get like pistachio in your pasta. It'd be like pine nuts or something like that. Also in this is bacon, but we don't typically find this kind of pasta back home. Like I mean the noodles itself. So let's just try it out and see how it is. Mm. I really like that you can get that crunch from the pistachio, but I really taste the bacon. The bacon is very flavor forward. It kind of gets hits you right in the face all at once. Mm. Really good. The pesto is subtle, but the pasta with the noodles itself, so, so soft. This is so, so good. I asked the waitress, I'm so glad I did. I said, like, what's kind of the most local to this area, like this region here in Sicily? And she said, I had to go for this dish. Glad I did. Anna went for the Norma. I think we kind of won today, guys. This is delicious. If you're coming here, make sure to try this out. Well, that was a super awesome day. So nice to finally get back to the beach and Ugh. spend a day there. But please, someone explain Italian beaches to us. Yeah. What, is your thought? what are your thoughts if you're from Italy? Now, maybe it's like this all over Europe, but for us, again, We've been to the Caribbean a lot. We're from Canada. We've been to the United States a lot. We've been all around the world. Yeah. <laughs> We've been out to all around the world. <laughs> We're just not to not used to the beaches being quite like this. Like yeah. just kind of beach clubby and kind beach of beach clubby and like not very busy and not very public. Yeah, not very public. So let us know in the comments. We're just curious. Mm -hmm. We're not saying it's better or for worse. We're just honestly very very curious <laughs> mm -hmm. so that being said do you think we could live here and for those of you that are new we're trying to find places across the world yeah. that we could at least spend a few months or live longer term that's one of the goals of the channel right now if mm -hmm. you're just tuning in we're trying to figure out like where we could set up shop to maybe mm -hmm. live for a few months at a time could we live in this little town i don't know i'd be curious uh, a month from now when it's like more shoulder seasony but i don't yeah. think there's enough restaurants and amenities for us yeah probably not so if we're going to compare like places we've already been we love chefalu but it was super busy yeah so i feel like if i was going to pick a place right definitely, now definitely. so far in sicily it would be then but in shoulder season yeah 100 percent. i would pick chefalu to mm -hmm. live in but mm -hmm. in shoulder season but that's just a hunch maybe yeah. shoulder season's yeah. just as busy <laughs> yeah but in the next video we're going to be going to Taormina, so it's like 
once we get up there and realize that it's a contrast of these two places, maybe it'll sway us. We'll see. You'll have to wait for the next video to see. <laughs> so we do want to shout out one of our Patreon members, Martha Bronitsky. A big thanks to you. She's one of the epic members and she's been supporting us and that really helps keep us on the road. Yeah. So if you want to be an epic member and get a shout out in the video, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, head over to Patreon, sign up for the epic level, basically. Exactly. If you're not and you're just supporting us in any other way, that's thank perfect. you very much. The mm -hmm. videos are free. If you're just watching, that supports us as well. Yeah. Helps keep us on the road, but we can't wait to get to the next stop, which is that hilltop that we already mentioned. That's yeah, so, be so if you fun. haven't figured it out already, the next video is going to be in Toromina. The last yeah. video was in Catania. We're so enjoying our time here in Sicily. If you're new, Trevor and a Delightful Travelers, click subscribe, leave us a comment, hit share, all the things. We really appreciate you watching this far in the video, and there's a lot more Italian adventures yeah, it's coming up. not over up. yet. You know what? I don't think we have that much Sicily content coming up. But other than Toromina, yeah. but there's definitely lots more from Italy. All right, guys, that's it. <laughs> from Naxos, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.